overcome the, that, that hooking challenge? Yeah, I think I think you know I see I see two ways. I think OTAs are good um, when you start and when you you don't know where to start. Well, OTAs are going to bring you business without without you having the hassle to think about where should I start and stuff like that. But I think in the meantime, you should also study because you know, you're paying charges, right? And so you should you should study whether you're better off doing it yourself or you think that it makes business sense to you to rely purely on OTA. So that's a business decision that you have to make. But you have to think this through. It's not just by, by accident that this should happen. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, one at the back. Please identify yourself. Oh, a student. Well done. Uh, so we can't hear you over here. We need more students asking questions, specifically the Thais. Okay. Um, my name is Jenny. I'm from the NHTV in Breda, in Holland. And um, I have a question for James. It's about uh, the social media manager. Uh, can you maybe tell a little bit more of uh, what he does, if you can? And uh, I'm thinking about like what, how do you come up with a strategy? Does he work from nine to six, or how how does it work? Actually, she's a she. Our most successful social media managers have been all females. But this one particularly we hired and brought in was originally Filipino, but has spent the last 15 years in Texas. So we actually brought her from Texas to stay with us um, only for about uh, it was about 10 months. So no, she worked around the clock. She would. The idea was to you know generate awareness of the brand, also to promote special events, and so she was with the normal platforms of uh, Facebook and Twitter and uh, you know Twitter and all of those type of a things. And uh, even the, the rugby sevens actually was a big one that we did. Uh, almost half of the rugby seven teams stay at our at our hotel, so that was one of the big social media type of pushes. Does that answer your question a little bit? Well, I'm I'm interested in, in uh, how she did it, but I don't know if you if you can if you, if you know that like kind of thing. Like the strategy that like, she used. Yeah, I mean, if you think about awareness, it's not just sure, like okay. publishing whatever, but you, how how does she connect? Her 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 point was tie specific events to the hotel company, also with specific people. So all of the executives, she created accounts for all of the executives and actually helped populate those accounts. Of course, the CEO doesn't write, his, you know, doesn't do his own tweets. She would do those for him. Uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, she would actually go through and look at my LinkedIn page and say, you have to take that off, you have to add this. And she, you know, she actually went through and said, this, this is much too professional. You need to put some more joking, humorous type of things in here. So those were the strategies. Tie the events to the hotel, to the individual individuals and you know try to obviously build some momentum through that if that makes sense thanks a lot can, can I just add one thing um, just to, to address your question there's there's one mistake that I, I very often see on you know on social networks for, for brands who go online it's you talk to you talk to consumers the same way you do your your advertising which is completely wrong right so don't use your beautiful key message, advertising message to talk to consumers. You know, that's exactly why they go on social networks because they want to talk to you know, a friend. You know, so your brand has to be their friend. And you have to talk to them the same way you would talk as a friend. So it might not be like grammatically beautiful or correct, but it's, it's part of you know, what a social network is. It has to be more intimate. Okay, I think we have time for maybe one last question. Go right ahead. Uh, my name is Jonathan, I'm Stanford student. Uh, I have a question uh, regarding the OTAs, and uh, you can see a lot of uh, independent operators, they're trying to break the dependency of the OTAs, and apparently for season they understand the importance of a good website. Can you tell me about, this question for James, uh, can you tell me about the, the future and the relationship between OTAs and uh, hotels? Of course. Um, in the hotel business, we like to say we love OTAs. They're our friends. <laughs> Anytime you have a distribution channel that's charging you 15, 20, 30 percent, you look for other ways of, of getting your message out there. So the future of OTAs 
from the perspective of the hotel industry, of course, it would be a lot different than the perspective of the OTAs as far as what they're looking for. But everything is changing very fast, and that's the key. The future is unpredictable. That's the that's the key thing going forward, is what tipping point will occur, what will happen that will drastically change the current balance, who knows, but something will change because it, it doesn't make, there's no business case for why does this person get a 30% commission for you know, running this website when the product they're selling you can buy on my website and you know, if I can produce, if I can put that to the same market. I mean, 30% is just a huge margin, and it's, it's too much. So what will happen in the next few years? Hard to tell. Hotels will continue, as, as we've seen with the new, is it Globe Key? Is that what it's called? I forget, but with Marriott and the, the, the collective that collaborated on that. Hotels will continue to try to push OTAs to be at least reasonable with their rates or out of the game a little bit more, and OTAs will continue to spend all of their effort being more... Um, significant, more c consumer friendly so that consumers will continue to use them, if that makes Denise, sense. Denise, would, you, would you, you like to, you mentioned the, 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 the fights that are taking place between the OTAs as well. Would you like to answer that question as well? I'm sure your, your response will be very... Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm my, you know, my opinion will be a, a little bit sensitive, right? Yes, uh, Because recently we had some arguments with the OTAs in China, uh, the, the biggest OTAs in China, about their, the value they provided to the users what their value add in the value chain. It's like if they just negotiate with the hotels to get a commission ratio and uh, try to get higher volume and to get higher rebate. Uh, and uh, they you know, do the marketing on Baidu or you know, Google or China to buy the traffic. What's the, value they are, what's the real value they are providing? What's the real value they are providing? Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. That's the, uh, <laughs> and, and that's exactly right, because part of the problem is why OTAs have the power they do. It's because hotel companies are, have been incompetent. If, if I can go on to Agoda and get the room for 30% less, of course I'm going to do that. And so maybe actually our friends from Google can, can give us some more insight into that exactly. Is the issue, you know, it's the price parity. It's a revenue management issue. And if consumers are, are able to, to do it more effectively through OTAs because hotels are, are not capable of controlling parity, then that's where they moved to. Yeah, somehow I knew this was going to land up back in Google's lap. <laughs> <laughs> the, the answer is actually quite simple. Uh, I mean, uh, apart, aside from, from Four Seasons that has spent like 18 million on, on, on their website, the website tend to suck. <laughs> <laughs> to suck. They suck. I mean, let's put it, let's call a spade a spade. But, and that's why I, I would go to Agora or, you know, or to the other guys, because when I go, it's like, in five steps, I'm done. Plus, I get a discount, or maybe sometimes I don't even get, but it's fast. Are the websites as fast? Is that as convenient? Is that, is that well-structured? Is that, you know, in a couple of clicks, can I bank a booking? You know, we, we, you're assuming that, you know, all the websites are like the Four Seasons, and, and it's great, and it's fast, and it's simple, and, you know, the, the page doesn't go blank when you, when you hit payment. Right? But not all the websites are like that, and that's the truth. Yeah, and that's that's one reason I I would go. My there's a there's a very high chances that Agoda is not going to do that on me. Yeah, I'm not taking sides, but I'm ta I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, and there yeah, are very simple examples. This morning I was trying to book a movie ticket for my wife and her mom. Cannot. Didn't work. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when I was talking to you know, Asia, we made a joke that it's actually f f easier to buy a, a, you know, a f flight ticket than it is to buy a movie ticket in Tanglin. <laughs> try try buying, movie in, buy, buying a movie ticket in Tanglin. So it's not just travel, you know, travel websites, but it's, it tends to be a tendency in, in, you know, across many industries. In, in, in you don't pay enough attention to your, to your websites. Your website is just a shop, like a physical shop, but it happens to be online. Yeah. Denise, you wanted to add to that? Okay, I want to add on one point. Because recently, you know, uh, again, you know, there is a huge argument in China about, you know, the, the OTAs and the Chinas uh, uh, direct partnership with the hotels. It's a huge argument because the OTAs uh, is arguing that, you know, China want to work with the hotels directly to include their uh, information into our search results. 
they consider we are competing with them and we are trying to be an OTA, which is kind of weird for us because we were not originally from the travel industry. We just come from the internet background. We consider, you know, the direct and the intermediate is a good combination of uh, to fit in different consumers' needs. However, how come the OTA consider if you know directly work with the hotels to you know show their B two C website uh, fares and uh, room availability, and uh, we work with the hotels directly, will compete with them directly? It's very uh, interesting question, right? So what the value? <laughs> And uh, also, sorry, and also I, I feel it's very interesting argument is about, you know, uh, what's the in, um, disruption of the hotel booking behavior. I mentioned in my presentation about the, you know, surprisingly, uh, surprisingly uh, the uh, group buying website, actually their volume is uh, tripled of the biggest uh, OTA group buying business. What tells us? because I consider the group buying website is not travel website. However, they are focused on the creative, focus on the innovation of how the consumer make the bookings, why they are booking, uh, making the bookings. For example, the, uh, the Meituan, the group buying business, they actually find the needs of which the OTAs didn't fit. For example, the universities, the KTVs, the hotels around the KTVs, around the universities, they have different needs from the you know business travelers, so they figure out if there is a niche, you know they can focus on, and uh, actually they only spend one year to exceed all the OTAs. Okay, good. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all we have time for. Uh, personally, I can tell you the technology has done one thing very good for all of us. Uh, it's helped to improve the quality of presentations at conferences significantly, because in, in the days of short attention spans, when people get see that there is a boring presentation going on in a conference, they either go to sleep or they start reading their email on their Blackberries and things. And I saw that in this audience today, nobody went to sleep and I didn't see anybody actually reaching out for their Blackberries and phones. So you did a great job, guys. Well done. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Thank you very much the panelists and please stay on stage and uh, may I invite Professor Perry Hobson as the representative to present the appreciation of token to our panelists and moderator. gentlemen, can I just briefly intervene to explain that our chairman, myself and some of our team uh, have a duty that we have to go and visit the Ministry of Tourism, the Thai visit Ministry of Tourism. This is just to remind you that politics is important and your university teaches politics and politicians make the law. So if our industry is going to influence the law and the environment, we have to engage with politicians. So please excuse us. It's not because we want to miss Perry's presentation or the final uh, engagement, but a delegation of four or five of us led by our chairman are going uh, over to the Ministry of uh, Tourism now. 
So I'm going to tell Kate and Echo and Chris to come and sit in the front row and you're to bring with you one Thai student each. And one of those Thai students is going to ask a question in the final session. Wouldn't that be a good idea, MTS? You'd agree with me? Right. Chris, come forward. Kate, Echo, come forward. But you only come forward when you brought one Tamasad student with me. So start thinking about your question. Find a student and bring them forward. Because I hate to see an empty front row. I'm sure you do too, Perry. Good. Okay. Move forward. I hope you notice Chris is dressed in Australian business wear. Very casual. Right. Come on, we have five seats to fill here. Be quick, don't be shy. Very good. Okay, you found a, a new friend, Kate. Well done. You see this is international cooperation in action. Ivy, I want you to go and find one other person, maybe. Anyone else? Are there any more seats? Do we need to fill any more? Go ahead, Kate. Okay. Perry, having caused that chaos and uh, hopefully enlivened the uh, audience, I'm going to hand over to you. And I look forward to seeing all of you are invited tonight. Just to be completely clear, you are invited to come to our uh, open air reception uh, right outside our office uh, from 6 o'clock. And I recommend you come. It'll be a lot of fun for about an hour and a half. And please do uh, find your way there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Martin. Okay, uh, I know it's been a lot of time sitting. And what I'd like to first start with, before we just do the formal introduction, I'd like everyone just to stand up and introduce yourself to the person who's behind you, except if you're in the back row. And at least meet someone else before the networking lunch, but behind you. The person behind you or in front of you, Please meet someone new. Stand up a bit. That's it. Someone new behind you. You probably know the person next to you. That's it. A Thai wife, everybody, please. Now look at all that conversation happening. Fantastic. Now I'm going to ask you if you would like to sit down again. And uh, if you're on the far side of the room, if you want to come this way, please feel free to move seats. Grab a seat. The show is about to begin. And if it doesn't, then you don't get lunch. <laughs> Okay, please feel free to sit down. You have a whole half an hour for lunch. You have an hour. Okay, thank you very much. Please sit down, that's okay. Please have a seat. Please have a seat. Please have a seat. Okay. For those of you on the far side of the room, they say that Thais like to talk, no way. Okay, has everyone got a seat? Thank you. Thank you. Have you got a seat? All right. Now it's been said that the worst place to speak is before lunch or after lunch. I got the before lunch spot. Yes, it's true. 
Okay, could I ask you please to sit down? Thank you, Ivy. Thank you, Glenn. There we go. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, that is really good interaction. So I love